You see, in the 1400s, the start of the slave trade, Portuguese captains Antoa Goncleves and Nuo Tristao came to Africa looking for gold. With them, they took 12 slaves and sold them in Portugal. A hundred years later, the trend started to gather momentum. And so John Hawkins, an English captain, came to Africa to take 500 slaves and burnt villages to obtain them. So profitable was this trip that he came back to Africa another three times, taking back with him in total over a thousand people. The conditions that people traveled in were deplorable. They were captured and spent the duration of these journeys in ships for several months. Men, women, and children were taken on board, stripped naked, and examined head to toe by the captain. Laying below deck, shackled together with iron chains. They lived below deck with limited fresh air and poor sanitation, which greatly increased the risk of disease. And even by the time of the late 1700s and early 1800s, when the slave trade was finally abolished in law in European countries, approximately 12 million people had been expropriated from Africa over this timeline. But even then, with the slave trade being abolished, the ways to suppress African entrepreneurship and um, creativity were still being carved out. You had the Berlin Conference chaired by Otto von Bismarck, where a range of countries came together to carve out Africa to understand how they could benefit from the resources and the people of Africa to build their own economies. What happened to those Africans who reached the New World and how the legacy of slavery still affects their descendants today is fairly well known. But what is not often discussed is the effect that the Atlantic slave trade had on Africa's future. Not only did the continent lose tens of millions of its able-bodied population, but because most of the slaves taken were men, the long-term demographic effect was even greater. When the slave trade was finally outlawed in the Americas and Europe, the African kingdoms whose economies it had come to dominate collapsed, leaving them open to conquest and colonization. And the increased competition and influx of European weapons fueled warfare and instability that continues to this day. They were led by Don Diego de Azambuja. It is 535 years old now. 535 years, and still standing. Mm. But the one in Accra was built by Denmark, Danish, 1661. It is 356 years old. Mm. This English castle, 1665. And this one is 352 years now. Mm. So Cape Coast Castle is the youngest or the smallest castle in Ghana in terms of age and size. The castle you are today began as a fort. The very fort was built by the Swedish Sweden around 1654. The fort changed hands for about four times due to stiff European competition. 1658, Denmark people took over the fort from the Swedish. 1661, the local people in this town, that is the Fetu people, seized the fort from the Danes. 1664, Dutch occupied it. But due to the Anglo-Dutch war in the subsequent year, English had it. They transformed the fort into the very castle. It took them 60 years for its transformation. Okay. So Cape Coast Castle is a living monument and also a World Heritage Site in this country. It was listed by UNESCO around 1979. We are saying that strong men and women were known as commercial captives, but the weak were the domestic captives. Male dungeon. This dungeon held 1,000 captives at a time. Wonderful. Surprisingly. Right on top of this dungeon was a church. Mm. Church on the dungeon. 
<laughs> Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, SPG Church. The pastor was interestingly an, you know, a Ghanaian pastor hmm. by name Philip Quill. The pastor's father was a slave trader by name of Rinpong Kujo. The male slave dungeon. The bust you see here of the portraits, the idea is to let you understand more how our forefathers suffered in here by their facial expressions. Can you get closer to it for me? Uh, for example, the one we have here with the bandage, this very right one. The idea is to let us understand how, you know, when he was captured, he fought. So he sustained serious injuries in the head. The same person cannot see again. He is blind. On my right hand side, you can't find one here. He has opened his mouth. He is crying bitterly in this country. Now, I mentioned five chambers in a male dungeon. This is the first chamber. And I said each chamber held 200 captives. And this is the first one. So the numbers in this one had their light and air from this side. And they were in the dungeon for three months. So after three months, the enslaved Africans were shipped from the dungeon to the Americas and the Caribbean. The slave traders were many. So they had their own individual ways of branding or identifying their captives. Some slave traders used ear ring, ear ring to identify their captives. Others went in for the said arm, I mean branded arm itself on their skin. Beneath the branding line was the trader's symbol, initials. Somewhere like ATI, KOI, JSS. It simply means John Simmons Slave, JSS. It was placed or dipped into a very hot fire. And right from the fire, women at the back stabbed. Men, chest, or even here, just to identify. So during the branding, the strong men were held in this chamber. But because of their strength, they were locked up. They were chained and shackled. So during vomit and toilet on the floor, they were in this same mess for three months. Now, look on the wall here. We have this quiet mark here. The very quiet mark. Oh, and you'll see it here. The white mark is right here. So ladies and gentlemen, I have my hand on this mark now. So from this level to the base, the floor, this very height was filled up with choked toilet, mm. choked toilet, urine and vomit up to this level mm. all over the place. I mean everywhere. So where we are now has been excavated. That was in 1974. Hmm. This is the original floor. Trench for drainage. When it rains, the waters run through the holes out there here, like you are seeing today, just to wash the surface of their mess through the same trench into the very deep sea. But the trench wasn't used because their mess got it covered up to the side. Most of them became partially blind. Malaria, diarrhea killed many of them. So we are saying that. Those who died in this dungeon exceeded those who survived. Over 35 million Africans were transported into slavery. But 25% came to Cape Coast Castle because this was their major trading post or headquarters. Spy hole for better supervision, soldiers only. Soldiers again stand there every afternoon with a bucket of sea water just to pour on them here to pull down their body temperatures. Right above the dungeon was a church, church on the dungeon. 
society for the propagation of the gospel. 